Hi everyone and welcome back to Malbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and I'm back here today with another whiskey review. And before I get started, Happy New Year to you and yours. I hope you had a fantastic festive period. And uh, yeah, welcome to 2022. Can't wait to see what that holds. So I'm very, very excited, as I always am, uh, to, uh, to record this review for you today because I'm going to be opening another bottle of whiskey for you today. Now, the last time I did this, I reviewed the Aaron 18 and it blew me away to the point where it actually made second place in my whiskey of the year 2021. I am probably a little bit more excited to open this one only because I've had it before, but I've not had it for a couple of years because I've not been able to get hold of it. Because everyone's been buying it too fast. <laughs> it's it's become, it's a core range whiskey that has become almost unobtainable unless you're sat at your computer at 6 a.m. on a Tuesday morning refreshing Google Chrome like an absolute madman. And I don't want to have to do that. I've got enough stress in my life. I don't want to do that. This is a whiskey that is from a very, very well-respected distillery, particularly amongst whiskey geeks. They do a lot of things well, and they do a lot of things right. They are one of the few distilleries left that have their own malting floors. They are a distillery that is actually connected to an independent bottler and has another distillery. Uh, they are both in Campbelltown. <laughs> I think you know where I'm going with this one. Now... It's been a while. In, in fact, I'm trying to remember the last time I reviewed a Springbank on the channel. It might be a while. It might even have been in my previous iteration of, of Maltbox prior to, to restarting it. I don't know. But ultimately, guys, here it is. The Springbank 10-year-old is the whiskey that I'm going to be looking at today. I am made up to have a bottle of this. This was a fantastic uh, surprise from my wife for Christmas. She actually put it next to my 15 and my 18. Uh, and said, I've, I've bought you a bottle of whiskey. Um, find which one it is. <laughs> and what you, I know you can see probably half of the shelf behind me, but those shelves stretch all the way over there. Um, so it took me a while, and I was like, oh, there it is, I can't believe it. I was like, absolutely made up. A couple of years ago, I was buying this like it was going out of fashion, just like, yeah, whatever, there's loads of it. And that in-stock add-to-cart button never disappeared. Now... I see little things that say one per customer. Now, I go on a website that I see on Twitter says, yeah, yeah, we've got a couple of these in stock at 8 a.m. I get onto the website at 8 a.m. and four seconds, and they've all gone. <laughs> it's madness. I can't even get hold of it. And I think that's, you know, I mean, if, if you guys watched the Osbers, there was a few references that, that Roy made. There'll be, you know, yeah, Springbank won Distillery of the Year, well-deserved. Fantastic distillery, great team. But it's probably a reason why more of the whiskies didn't make it into the nominations or to the people's vote, because you can't get hold of it anymore. Anyway, foils off. Cork is about to be popped. And I'm really excited to share this with you guys. I really, really am. Can't wait. <laughs> that is already going to be the best cork pop of 2022. I just know it. I just know it. Oh, Springbank 10. I'm so happy to have it back. I'm so happy to have it back in my collection, on my shelves, alongside its 15 and 18 year old brethren. Um, I've got a couple of single cast bottlings knocking about in the cupboards for a rainy day. And it's also near to its uh, Kilkerran, Glen Gyle brother as well on the shelf. I mean, I've not reviewed the Kilkerran 16 year old yet. I will. It's the first release that I got. I think they did a second batch maybe, or certainly second lot of them made them onto the market. I'm about halfway through it. Uh, I will review that at some stage. I've, I've also got a bottle of 12 year old, but I reviewed that um, a couple of years ago. However, I will re-review at some point. But again, that 16 year old from Kilkerran and the 12 year old Kilkerran sold out like, just, just no tomorrow. It just went as soon as that came out. And if you'd have told me five or even ten years ago, when I still bought Springbank in the old black label with the with the orange S on it, that I wouldn't be able to get hold of the ten-year-old, 
I'd have laughed at you. I'd be like, come on. It's good, it's good, it's very good, I would have said, but surely there's other things that people would buy, you know, more readily than that. So, Springbank 10. In case you haven't tried it before, this is a very, very atypical expression from Jay and A. Mitchell Group, who are one of the, probably the more well-known, certainly in whiskey circles, distilleries, for, I've already said it, doing things right, doing things well. What we mean by that is natural colour, non-chill filtration, 46% as standard. And there it is, again, on the label. There it is, and I mean, colour, natural, lovely, dark gold. I'm leaving it to open up in the glass for a bit. Now, I think from memory this is matured exclusively in ex-bourbon casks, but I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've had it. Now, interestingly, Springbank, one of the few distilleries, they do it with Glen Gyle as well, Jane and Mitchell. Um, they actually outline around non-chill filtration on the back and what it does to whiskey. So, it says... Unlike other whiskies, Springbank Single Malt is free of artificial colouring. Also, it is not chill filtered. This will cause a slight natural haze to form when it is cold, but this will disappear when the temperature returns to normal. I think if more companies did that, people would get used to it. There wouldn't need to be as much you know, chill filtration for standard releases, I don't think. Because people be like, all right, yeah, fine, whatever. That's cool, good to know. Cheers, thanks for that. I'll just wait till it warms up. Um, if you want it with ice, then you'd be like, oh, it's a bit cloudy. Well, cool, that's fine. It says, that, says that's what it's supposed to do on the bottle, effectively, if that makes sense. Um, now, Springbank, just to kind of go back to a few basics as well, is one of three distilleries in Campbelltown. You have got Springbank, you have got its sister distillery, if you will, because they're owned by the same parent company, Jane A. Mitchell, in the form of Glen Gyle, which is bottled as Kilkerran, and you have the fantastic Glen Scotia as well. Now, Campbelltown used to be the home of Scotch whiskey. It was insane. It had more distilleries, I think, per square inch than anywhere else in Scotland until around the 1920s. Because the Americans did this really stupid thing. And sorry, guys, sorry for all the, all the Americans watching. There's been a few of those. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm British, I'm English, so I can kind of say the same thing for me and, and for us as, as a nation as well. We've done some very stupid things. However, the most stupid thing that they could have possibly done, they just went, went ahead and did, which was prohibition. The banning of consumption and sale of alcohol. Unless you got a prescription for it, weirdly. I mean, imagine going to see a pharmacist now and saying, yeah, can I, can I get my prescription for a cast strength Bunahaven, please? Uh, I'm running low. Um, and ultimately, what that did is that killed the Scottish whisky industry, effectively. Also not helped by the Pattinson crash, which I'm not going to go into detail of, but basically some dodgy fella did something really, really bad. And uh, a lot of distilleries, a lot of people were owed a lot of money and a lot of them closed. But a lot of it, in particular in Campbelltown, came down to prohibition in the US. That was their main market. There's only so many people in the UK, you know. America was a huge Scotch whisky market, and a lot of those distilleries closed. Now, this should have opened up enough to get a, bit, a little bit of air in it and give you a little bit of a taste. Now, a little bit of a swirl around the glasses, give me some nice beading around the edge. Just rub one of those fingerprints on it that I've got on it, on the nose. Oh my god, I've missed this so much. Yes, 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 yes. Get in. It's herbaceous. It is a little bit peaty, a little bit smoke in there. It's so barley driven as well. There's a lot of barley in there. You've got this wonderful haylage note. Now, I always use haylage for, well, yeah, for, for a lot of spring banks, to be fair. And haylage is basically, it's cattle feed. It's hay, it's grass that's been cut and baled. Baled dry. And as those grasses, that grass is sat there in those bales, it starts to effectively ferment and decompose slightly. But it's this lovely kind of sweet cut grass note. 
I live, I've lived behind farms all my life. I'm kind of used to the smell. It's lovely. It's very reassuring. Hmm. We've got banana. I've got a bit of toffee. And this lovely kind of minerality to it as well. Almost a sea air saltiness um, on the breeze. It's not an overly smoky dram. It's peated, yeah, but it's kind of lightly peated. It's the medium end, I'd probably say. Um, I mean, don't forget, Springbank, as a distillery, produces three kinds of spirit. You've got Hazelburn, which is the unpeated spirit and generally triple distilled. You've got Springbank, which is double distilled or two and a half times distilled from memory, and is peated. But then you've got Longro, which is their heavily peated spirit. It's a very small distillery in the scheme of things. The output is very, very small compared to the majority of Scotch whiskey distilleries. However, they're independently owned. They have their own malting floors, which is a rarity nowadays. A lot of malted barley for the majority of Scotch whiskey distilleries is bought in. It's ready done. It's been done somewhere else at maltings, like big malting companies ship it up to Scotland. Didn't realise that Winston was here, I do apologise. But Springbank is still doing all this themselves. And with such a small operation, such a small team, I think there's this kind of craft word that's bandied around a lot in whiskey, particularly American whiskey and nowadays Scotch whiskey as well. But for me, Springbank are one of the standouts, one of the last bastions of a true craft distillery. So, back to the whiskey itself, instead of me talking, I do apologise. Lovely nose overall, there's a little bit of creaminess, a little bit of vanilla in there right at the back, and a lovely spiciness, a little bit of black pepper, for example, on the palate. What a texture, what a mouthfeel. That is thick. I'm still, I'm always chewing my words. It's oily. It's like honey. And there's honey in there. We've got hot ginger. We've got the peat in there. There's a little bit of smoke in there. But it's not overpowering. Again, as I say on several reviews, it's there to add depth. But there is a little bit of a smoky edge. We've got some smoked meats. Think charred meat, charred beef, burnt ends. Really nice, crunchy, chewy, charred meat. It then becomes a little bit more floral. Some of that minerality remains as well. Very, very pure. It's... It's fantastic. It is. It's fantastic. It's fantastic spirit. I think one of my bugbears about it is... And this is going back to that kind of sellout thing and the FOMO thing. It has turned into a FOMO bottling. It's not, it's it's effectively a core release bottling that has become a limited release <laughs> because it's that hard to come by. The price has also gone up as well from memory. I swear, and I could be wrong, but I swear this used to cost between 35 and 45 quid about five, five or six years ago. I could be wrong. Let's just say 40 to 45 just to be safe. This will now set you back around 55 to 60 from certain retailers. And that's RRP. Between 50 and 60 quid now. And that's a lot of money for a 10 year old. I can get a 15 year old for that. There are a lot of 15 year olds on the market for that. Hell, might even be a couple of 18 year olds on the market for that at the right price, at the right offers. But I think what you need to consider with this is the quality not only the presentation, but the spirit itself. There's a reason it sells out fast. There's a reason that people have been so turned on to it in the last five years. Again, I never used to have problems getting this. But since the wider whiskey community has grown for the better, knowledge has grown, it's become an attractive purchase. I am happy about that, and I am also Slightly not, because I am now one of the many people trying to get it. I mean, the fact my, my wife managed to find this is amazing. Absolutely fantastic. Oh. 
Mm. Going back to that palette, the ginger is lovely. The maltiness is fantastic. It almost the maltiness in a way reminds me of an Aaron. I always get this lovely kind of honeyed maltiness uh, from Aaron's. And I kind of get that here, but this is also built out with that, that peat and that smoke. But also the other flavours in there as well that I've already mentioned. There's also some toffee, maybe a little bit of lemon zest. There's some citrus just towards the end. The finish, long, <sighs> thick, <laughs> a bit like the palate, honeyed. Um, a little bit of that smoke, a little bit of the more herbaceous flavours that I probably described on the nose rather than the palate, that becomes more present on the finish. It's great. I've already said it's fantastic. It is. It's great. I can't knock it. There's no fault that I can find with this apart from the accessibility of actually getting it and potentially the pricing increase as well. Um, but I suppose, you know, raw materials are probably costing more. Distribution is probably costing more. Um, we need to bear in mind as well the effect that Brexit's had on a lot of businesses. They need to make that, that up somewhere else. Uh, and ultimately, yeah, what a fantastic whiskey. You kind of saw that coming, surely. You're not going to be like, wow, well, I thought he was going to say it was rubbish, are you? I mean, it's Springbank. Everyone knows it's going to be certainly of a quality. So I'm going to box it off now. I'm going to go away and sit here with a few more of these, I think. <laughs> Uh, but thanks for watching guys seriously i really really do appreciate it all of you subscribers all of you that have watched my previous reviews even those of you that don't subscribe thank you a huge thank you to all of my patreons i really really appreciate what you do um, and for enabling me to kind of continue this blog and build out the whiskies that i'll be able to try as well as a couple of different exciting bits into this new year i'm on social media Twitter at Maltbox, Instagram at Maltbox Whiskey, and also over at maltboxwhiskey.com. Thanks for watching. See you soon.